Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I am Katie, Senior Marketing Manager at Concora, and I'm excited to have two guest presenters with us today um, from one of our partner manufacturers, Precision Plumbing Products. Our guests are Brandon Porsche, Customer Service Manager, and Brandon Gunnell, VP of Sales and Marketing. And they will be joining our host and CEO of Concora, Kip Rapp, to present the case study today. But first, just a few housekeeping items. Um, if you have a question, you can type it in the chat section or click the speech bubble button at the top of your screen to submit anonymously. We are recording this um, and you will receive an email with a link to the recording tomorrow morning. Um, and finally, we will also give you the opportunity to get a complimentary audit of your commercial web experience. Um, and I'll share that link with you at the end of the webinar. So with that, I will go ahead and turn it over to Kip and we'll get started. Kip. Hey, thanks, Katie. Thanks, uh, everyone, for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, really happy to be able to talk to everyone about how we're helping and supporting the manufacturing industry and the construction industry and have an amazing story with uh, precision plumbing today and on this case study just wanted to go over a little bit of who concor is and uh, you know we we have a, we're a software company and our goal is to really help and and help uh, you as a manufacturer make it easier for your products to get selected and, and in today's digital age uh, it's important that uh, you're catering towards architects, engineers, and contractors, and your, and your digital strategy is really important to that. From your web experience, from your technical content, to the tools, and that's, that's really the new digital currency for your commercial business. And we're, we're, we call ourselves a digital experience platform to help building product manufacturers drive product selection and commercial growth by providing you with a uh, first cloud web, web web experience, uh, technical content, and valuable tools for the architects, engineers, and contractors. And a lot of what we uh, talk about today in this webinar will be an example of how that, that really has worked with uh, Precision Plumbing. Uh, and we have customers from all different sizes. What we've seen with interviewing architects, engineers, and contractors and working with customers such as Fuller and Certainty is that the selection process and how uh, ACs do business with you is, is it's generally the same and if you're a smaller company to a larger company. Uh, but it, it's definitely uh, our goal is to help promote and educate and provide the tools to make that whole ecosystem uh, much more efficient. And in today's case study, we'll be going over the steps, the business objectives, the process of precision plumbing, where they were in their uh, commercial business and their digital strategy and how they were able to look at the uh, architects and designers needs and partner with Concoro with our domain expertise and our software to drive their sales process. And, it, and it's really a partnership. And we'll, we'll be going over those steps, what, what was important and uh, the, the results we had. So real quickly, as, as Katie mentioned, uh, two uh, amazing folks on the phone, both are named Brandon, so that, that was confusing for me <laughs> at the beginning, but uh, we have Brandon uh, uh, Gunnell, who's the VP of Sales and Marketing. He started with uh, Precision Plumbing in, in 2017, and uh, before uh, PPP, he, he served as an executive at uh, Anvil International and an executive in New Hampshire. He's been selling uh, mechanical and plumbing uh, for over 25 years, and uh, while working on his degree in the University of Utah in communication and pre-law, Mr. Gunnell worked for Lawson Yeats. Uh, it was a company that eventually became Ferguson, and after graduation, he was promoted, moved to Colorado, where he met Anvil. Uh, and the second speaker that we have today is uh, Brandon Porsche. Uh, he's, in, he's a customer services manager, uh, he's been with uh, Precision Plumbing for over 15 years. He, he began his career as a temp in the machine shop, and after completing a couple years at the local community college, uh, he, he's had a, a, a diverse uh, set of responsibilities at Precision Plumbing over those years uh, and, and been promoted up through the ranks. He, he currently manages uh, PPP's technical department uh, while simultaneously assisting in customer service. Uh, Mr. Porsche is also responsible for uh, the CRM for Precision Plumbing. So with that, uh, <clears throat> I'd like to hand it over to Brandon a little bit. Just give you a little context of who Precision is, what they do, what they love, and, and who do they sell to. 
Thanks, Kip. As uh, Kip mentioned, um, I've worked for all of the uh, sizes of companies in the previous slide, and in all cases, selling is the same. It's important to create that pull-through business as a manufacturer to help your, your reps and your distributions. So we'll talk a little bit about that, but more on PPP. It was founded in 1968 by Allison Amundsen, her grandfather. Allie is the owner now. Her grandfather started the business with, with one valve and and then Allison's father added products to uh, what PPP is today. We primarily manufacture trap primers and water hammer arresters for those that aren't familiar with that. A trap primer is uh, all drains have a, a P-trap with a water seal to keep gas from uh, coming up and uh, smelling from the sewer. And we make a dev various devices that, that keep that seal. And then uh, a water hammer arrestor is is just what what it sounds like. Uh, any any plumbing plumbing system has valves, and when you slam those valves too um, quickly, you get that water hammer that that noise. And and we make a, a device that absorbs that energy wave. Uh, we make a couple other valves and and fittings, but predominantly those are the two things we um, we make. We've made them for a long time. We're, we feel like we're we're number one in our categories, and to do that, we've we've had to have quality, and we we've had to be specified, and uh, that's where we get our our moniker, specify with confidence, install with pride. Well, part of the part of the <laughs> uh, being specified is is uh, having is the various ways of getting specified and that, that that's what this this is all about and we're so we're happy to uh, uh, share our story on a project we we undertook to remain specified and uh, and continue to sell product all over the world great 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 thanks Brandon <clears throat> so you know with, with that what Trying to uh, elevate some of Brandon's story with Precision Plumbing is that, as we talked about in the digital age, specifiers, engineers, architects, subcontractors, they're all using digital processes for selecting products and for moving their projects forward. And what's important to them, and we've interviewed hundreds of architects. We recently completed a survey, if anyone's interested in serving architects, engineers, and, and designers, email surveys. And what, what do they need? What, what are influencers to select your products, to purchase your products uh, from uh, what we know? Your product quality obviously is very important. Price can be important. Uh, if you're going after contractors, there's, there's a lot of manufacturers that, that look at that. Uh, but then there's uh, higher uh, price uh, products and, and technically or me mechanically expert products that is in the specifications. Uh, but what we want to talk about with this uh, uh, webinar is the importance, the paramount importance of your digital strategy and a purpose-built strategy that's different from your uh, consumer market and your residential market. So it's your website, purpose-built for engineers and contractors and architects, uh, your content that you have available. You know, there's BIM and CAD and specs and three-part specs and, and the selection tools. As, as they select your products in a digital age, uh, the easier you can make them and enable their workflow, what, what we know through the surveys is that they will become loyal customers based on your web experience and the tools that you're going to provide. And, and the last category was interesting in the surveys is certainly the availability of reps and that, and that local high touch, high quality experience. But for, for the majority of this webinar, we will uh, want to go over how you as marketers can influence through a digital strategy. And why this matters is that also through uh, the results that we've seen in talking to contractors and engineers and architects is that if you aren't able to provide an aligned to digital strategy, web experience, or content, there's, there's up to a 50% chance that they will just go somewhere else 
another manufacturer that makes it easy for them. They are no longer calling you up as much or patient enough to wait for information. They're, a lot of their expectation is, is uh, they go to your website to look for digital content and tools. Uh, so that that was that was a very interesting observation through uh, throughout the years that we we've, we've uh, seen. So uh, overall, is uh, business objectives. Uh, I'll give it back to Brandon. So Brandon, what, what was uh, important to you uh, for your commercial business, and and how how you'd like to work with your uh, engineers and architects? Well, we want to remain the leader in the categories that we that we furnish and we feel we have one of the best rep networks path to market um in the industry. We we can we joke around here that sometimes we could put hot sauce in our catalog and, and uh we it would it would probably sell. But to remain that way you have to be specified and yet you have to be easy to do business with. And this platform allows us to do that. It, it makes it um, extremely e easy digitally to maintain these relationships with the architects, engineers, and contractors. We, we felt we needed to support these reps in doing their job. We, we make them, you know, they're responsible to have these relationships and sell into their area, but we realized that we needed to do a better job in supporting them with that. Um, this is a partnership um, with you guys to manage our digital strategy, and, and we needed a solution to that, and that that's kind of what we've created here. We feel we have. Great, great. And I, I know with um, a lot of manufacturers we talk to, Brandon, that you know this concept of doing business online is very important. And you know, and, and what we'll talk about later is, you know, the the, the content it's internally, it's, it's in order to provide that great web experience. Uh, it, one of the other objectives is, to, is your internal folks, like you mentioned, Michelle, that was managing a lot of this content, and, and we'll talk about how manual that was. But it, it's, it's also a and more of a, a internal objective that's important for a lot of manufacturers. <clears throat> Certainly, this this is a, so, a internal time saver as well compared to to the way we were were getting this information to the market earlier. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, and as we walk through this case study, and as Brandon laid out his objective to be able to appeal digitally and doing business online and manage content better. Do you, uh, uh, Brandon, walk us through how your process was before you decided to partner with Concora? Yeah, certainly. Uh, I alluded, alluded to it before, but <laughs> it certainly wasn't uh, sleek and fast. It was, it was very manual. We were getting requests from these architects, engineers, and contractors. They were asking for this content. We know that that uh, BIM and Revit objects, we know that's a big part of business and, and the way that people design and, and and go forward with projects. They would ask for that. They had to call us. And then we, we, we had all that information made, and uh, we were manually giving it to them when they called. So it, it doesn't speak to how many people couldn't find it online and then just moved on to the next, but... Uh, the, the calls that, that that did get through to us, we either had them on a thumb drive and mailed it out to them, or emailed it to them. Um, obviously, not not uh, ideal. We were um, very reactive versus proactive, to use corporate buzzwords, and um, that that just it didn't work very well. Uh, it, we we just don't feel like we were getting what we needed to market or, or had. It available and it wasn't easy to do business with us. So uh, we weren't supporting our reps and um, it was time consuming for all of us. Right. Yeah. And and then as uh, as we talked about earlier, can you maybe speak to your your prior process with your manufacturer reps? We have a lot of manufacturers 
they'll either have an inside sales team, uh, manufacturer reps, or distributors. Like, could you walk us through a little bit on how that worked earlier? Yeah, you know, we really, um, surprisingly, in, in this day and age, as a manufacturer, didn't didn't have a. We, we were again reactive. We would field if we picked up leads at a show or we somebody called in then we would we would pass along the information but we weren't out uh seeking new leads or or pushing our agenda like we should have been and so uh it it, it was it was very manual very reactive again somebody would call we would pass along information but but our poor reps weren't getting the leads that they needed from us. Yeah, no, thank you. And we hear that a bit. I mean, five, ten years ago, the uh, it was probably the the only way to be able to do that uh, without um, all the uh, emphasis on digital technology and BIM and CAD. But nowadays, uh, with with the adoption of digital processes and a strategy. Uh, there, there is an opportunity to really empower your sales team if it's a manufacturer rep or uh, inside sales. So it, it, it was certainly um, what you're talking about, Brandon, is very similar to uh, what we hear with, with other manufacturers. Uh, and as, as we talk to other manufacturers, uh, we, we know that uh, with that process, it, it comes down to some key challenges. and. Could you walk us through um, one or two? We'll talk about infrastructure on you know, what, what what about your current process? You, you kind of mentioned it was manual, but uh, that w one of those key process challenges that you had with with, uh, with what you're trying to do with uh, appealing to your uh, architects and engineers. Yeah, we didn't really have um, a database or or you know anything for our content. We we knew we were getting this. We then did post it online. And uh, but but didn't didn't really have a a, a record or a um, kept track of, of of specific leads on who was who was looking at this information and and follow, being able to follow up with the projects. It was also difficult for uh, Michelle, uh, who updates all of this information, and we, you know she's. She's very good at her job. But she's not a, a web designer, and um, updating and keeping our um, our content current was was also a challenge. Or, yeah, we we you know we and, just and really didn't. Time, have, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. One time you kind of mentioned you were you were also working with an aggregator site too. What what did you find that was the challenge around? Using a, a third-party site versus what you do today. We um, today we are in charge of our own platform. It's a lot sleek, faster. We can keep things absolutely up to date. We can take data in real time, push it out to our um, distributors, so they can immediately. Follow up and and make sure the cell is not flipping past us. Gotcha. Great. Thanks for that. Uh, and then from a second challenge area, as, as you just iterated on the actual content management, which a lot of people think, oh, I have a CMS system, I can manage this content. What what we've realized, and that Brandon's been ex explaining, is that. Managing BIM and a specification and a CAD file is not very easy in a CMS system. And, and one of the things that's very important is that is this buyer journey. And that for Brandon's case, he has a, an engineer that needs content. The content needs to be really accurate because they're putting inside of these 3D building projects. And so that's where we see if you have a CMS or a PIM system, we see where that falls short. And so, Brandon, can you walk us through? what was, um, I guess, specific to your buyer journey and your website that was challenging before you partnered with us? Again, we had a, a, a website that was, uh, <laughs> it was a, a beginner's website. And um, through this process, we, we first uploaded our images, our data onto our website, and then found that 
there was too many clicks, it was hard to get to, it wasn't always updated, there were some broken links. There was a lot of things that, that just made our, our um, user experience not good. Uh, we, in turn, recreated brand new website, added all of these, added this partnership, and now you, you know, you have, people have access to our website, our objects on our website, and an easy um, shopping cart, so to speak, from your platform. So it was a, a real solution in a lot of ways. Awesome. Great. Thanks for that explanation. Uh, and, and just to try to elevate a little bit for for a lot of the folks on the phone that are manufacturers, what we see is that now we recognize that a commercial business, growing your commercial business is paramount on a digital strategy that's focused on business outcomes for architects, engineers, and contractors. However, it's a little hard to get there because of the infrastructure. So we see that what uh, Brandon's been talking about is that there's three uh, systemic issues around uh, general manufacturers we talk to. So there's process issues. So as, as uh, Brandon mentioned, Michelle, this, this poor lady is getting content and she has to put it together and send it out. It's a disruption in her day. So there's a lot of process challenges with getting important information out. Digital content issues by not having the right content such as a BIM or CAD or three-part spec. And system issues because of it's all decentralized areas. Even, even at the larger companies we see you have so many systems, but they're not really supporting business outcomes or purpose built to help drive product selection. And so, with those are with those challenges, uh, it, it makes it very hard to have a, a digital strategy that's focused on commercial buyers. And as we alluded to with uh, your web experience, your commercial strategy, your digital strategy, if it's not providing that uh, alignment with your architects and designers and subcontractors, they will go somewhere else. Uh, th this number can be as high as 75%. I, I know we've talked to some uh, specifiers and some uh, designers, and they're, they're very uh, specific to what you have, and they don't have a lot of time. So that, that's why this all matters. And um, your projects can be anywhere from 10,000 to hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can imagine the opportunity, potential, or loss that your, your digital strategy can have on your commercial business. So uh, with, with uh, I'd like to hand it back to uh, uh, Brandon and just uh, say, wh wh why us, Brandon? Well, there, there's a lot of potential people you can work with. What, why, why Concora? Mr. Porsche, um was the uh, poor recipient of w once I realized that uh, our strategy was was lacking um, he, he uh, was tasked with the project to to interview options and, and we did our diligence we we there's uh, a lot of competitive options out there there's a lot of people uh, looking to to uh, push their um, system and what we found, other than, than, than what I've listed here, um, your platform integrated wonderfully with our website. We were easily able to control the data that we got back and get that out to our reps. Um, Mr. Porsche pushes that out once a month to our reps, the, the leads that come in. Um, he's able to manipulate the data. We like the fact that it's in a nice, uh, you know, everybody in, in, in business works in Excel and, and we can download it into Excel format. We can um, sort the data in, in any way that we need and then, and then get it out the way we need to get it out there. Great. Yeah. So the, the next few slides, I uh, wanted to go over our, our one of the reasons why we are successful. It's not only the, the software and the technology, but it's the approach that we take. And so with with uh, Brandon's company and Precision Plumbing, uh, there's a discovery process. And, and we've done certainly a lot of surveys on our, on our own and interviews with, with AECs and architects, uh, but it's important that we understand how 
this can affect your business. And, it, and it's uh, a bit of a, a revision to some of your processes. So and, and Brandon that will explain is that he has a current manufacturer rep process and how that works today. And it's important that we understand how that's going to be affected so it proves to be successful. So in that part of the case study is that we have this uh, uh, best-in-class approach for understanding your business needs uh, and then from an implementation standpoint, it can be a purpose-built implementation. As Brandon uh, alluded to, it's an integrated web experience. Uh, there's a technical content management and publishing piece for BIM and CAD and specs, and we implemented um, uh, product selection of projects tools and the submittals tools for your subcontractors. And what's extremely important and equally important is that we have a, a go go to market approach so that in, in Brandon's case, he has a, a litany of uh, manufacturer reps that uh, would in that education process of new ways to be able to engage their their engineering and architect buyers. And so that's important that we're able to coordinate with uh, co-branding and co-marketing. So part of the implementation was obviously delivering the software integrated into uh, Brandon's process and working with his marketing team to provide a, a really nice uh, splash in the market. And these are just some examples of what we – these are actual uh, screens from, from Brandon's platform. And as you mentioned, uh, the traps and the primers, those are all – as you can see with the technical content management, the ability to uh, edit Revit, to uh, put in technical content, and providing a great experience. Uh, this is an example on the right side of all the designers and architects that came to uh, Brandon's site, was able to provide – a lot of value at the end goal of getting them to select Brandon's products. And, and that was pretty exciting seeing results come in. And we've seen this time and time again and, and, and how what matters is for you to get your product selected and to work with a partner that's able to do that, not only from a software side, but from a process side. Uh, and just some more examples of projects for your subcontractor. So a lot of what we provide, Precision Plumbing, is the ability for them to provide tools and capabilities for their end customers in, in Precision Plumbing's brand. And so the ability for a subcontractor to go to your website, create a project, you get lovely project information. So if you're using Salesforce or CRM, you can create a, a nice entry and have that to a manufacturer rep or inside salesperson with a lot of great project information along with what products they're using and giving that subcontractor the ability to create a submittal so that those are some capabilities. And just some more examples of the information to help enable uh, Brandon's team on uh, actionalizing the interactions, these downloads of Revit content and turning them into leads and then into opportunities. Uh, so with that, at a high level, uh, we set across, and very important for us to support Brandon's uh, business objectives, and so substantial improvements across web metrics downloads, conversions, engagement, uh, a better web experience that's purpose-built for architects, engineers, and contractors, AECs. And as Brand uh, Brandon will uh, explain, uh, enhanced sales enablement process. And uh, so we will go over those in a little more detail in the, in the next few slides. So from a metrics point of view and from a case study results, uh, leads are effectively the most important thing that uh, working with uh, Brandon's team is as we're able to provide a better web experience with the right content and tools, we're able to increase leads. We started in March with um, Brandon's team, and as you can see, the growth over time. And these are, as Brandon will explain, are being actualized to his, his manufacturer reps, and that, that's very exciting. But we still have opportunity for improvement where you see in the conversion rates that this means that every uh, one out of five people are actually downloading and selecting a product. So we would like to move that up into where more people are actually not only going to and finding product information, but actually using it. Uh, so as yes, you can see with traffic and downloads from Revit files, uh, extremely important. Uh, and, and along with that, the other key metrics that if you are a specifier and architect and uh, with a lot of manufacturers, the ability for them to select multiple products. So if you have um, accessories or acquired products, those are all very good ways that your digital strategy can help uh, not only 
get products selected, but to get more products selected. And, and then obviously repeat visitors is, is definitely uh, important. And in, in Brandon's case, they have a, a litany of people that are, are going to his uh, web experience and, and, provi and where he's providing value. So Brandon, what, what I was uh, really excited is understanding more about, you, you mentioned how you were able to actualize this with your manufacturer reps. So could you walk us through a little bit on how you're able to take this digital strategy, take the data, and then and then move it across your manufacturer reps to, to really see great results? Yeah. Um, one thing that I wanted to mention, I, I guess on the previous slide, a lot of uh, these analytics were great. I think we were a little bit surprised at uh, the, the breakdown. There was the contractors. Um, we're doing more specifying than we thought, so we were able to kind of um, uh, change, tweak the way our ad program was going to be going forward in uh, 2020. So that, that that analytics was good information. Some of the other stuff that came um, from this was, uh, you know, just the pure leads, and and we had a, a wonderful example in Texas where uh, Mr. Porsche downloaded a lot of uh, traffic from from Texas. We, we sent it down to our reps in that area. The um, sales manager took that information and uh, created a couple lunch and learns that uh, uh, with, the, with these leads, they were able to follow up on them. Uh, any good sales guys looking for leads and, and people that will listen and um, the Northeast Dynasty School District is an example where in Texas they they going to use all of our stuff, specify our entire catalog, and 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 people can kind of sole source our products. And um, there's also a big the the, the big school district was uh, East West School District, and and again that was where. They, he called, made some lunch and learns. There were probably 20 to 30 guys, including um, architects there, and uh, was able to, to get an audience, and, and that's certainly gonna generate sales, and, and has, and, in, and you can see in the, the slide, we've, we have created a positive net effect. Great, Brandon, and, and I know a lot of manufacturers do lunch and learns today, What's the difference between the information that you can provide your manufacturer reps versus just doing a normal lunch and learn? The difference between what we supply the rep. Well, I think with the with the lunch and learn, you're out, you're in front of them, you get that back and forth. They can ask questions about your products. Uh, it, it, it's always it's the the same thing as a sales call. You want to be in front of people, you get that human interaction. But um, they're, not everybody, it's, they're hard to set up, right? You need the leads, you need the people that want to listen, that want you to come in, and that's what our leads provide. Sure. Yeah, and what we were talking about before is that because you already knew these folks had an interest, were thinking about selecting your products, and that made it that much more of a, a better relationship versus just talking to a, a random engineer. You're right. If if <clears throat> someone's not interested in hearing from you, they you uh you get a lot of uh I gotta go or uh, don't pick up the phone in the first place. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Great. So I uh, you know in summary um, wanted to be respectful of everyone's time and what we went over uh, uh, with Brandon's company, we do here with a lot of manufacturers is that your commercial business, your digital strategy and, and how Brandon's journey and how they were able to take um, our partnership and provide a better experience for their engineers and that drove traffic to uh, Brian's brand and, and that, uh, that uh, sorry, Brandon's brand and that brand loyalty. Uh, and, and then being able to take that from a back end process is important as a sales enablement to be able to equip your inside sales or manufacturer reps with meaningful conversations around 
you know, Joe from New Jersey, who's an architect, just looked at this product for this project. You can imagine how much more effective that could be for your sales team. Uh, and then just from a why this all matters is that if you look at your current digital strategy and web experience, as Brian has alluded to, is he was able to successfully take a, uh, our partnership and uh, make this uh, available for his manufacturer reps. And if you think of all the potential projects that your products could be sold into and, and having a better uh, digital experience, you can see that there, there's definitely a potential gain that you can have as far as uh, revenue. And on the flip side, if you, if you look at your current digital strategy today, and, and as Brandon alluded to, is if people that engineers, architects may not even tell you what they're looking for and they'll just move on. And so there, there's, a, there's a good opportunity loss that, that you, you could be experiencing with, with what you have from your website and selection and product tools. So with that, I uh, would like to send it back to uh, Katie and uh, talk about um, how we may be able to offer um, from you folks that are on the phone that are building product manufacturers uh, uh, a look at your digital strategy and your website, and um, she can send out um, uh, information around that. And um, what we'll uh, talk about, uh, which is very important for us, is how we're able to provide more educational uh, webinars in the future. And uh, Katie, I'd like to hand it over to you to, to uh, wrap up. Thank you, Kev, and thank you, Brandon, and Brandon, um, so much for helping us walk through this um, case study. Um, before I let everyone go, like Kip said, I wanted to mention our commercial experience audit. Um, we've talked a lot about digital experience and its importance to getting your product specified more often today. Um, and so we've used the surveys we've conducted with AECs to create a proprietary 14 point assessment that we can use to essentially raid the web experience that you're currently providing to architects, engineers, and contractors. So you will be redirected to that page at the end of the webinar where you can sign up if you would like to. Um, and I also want to mention our next webinar, which will be a live demo of our platform. No sales pressure, just the essentials of how our platform operates. And this month, we'll be focusing on experience and how Concora delivers a powerful experience to the AEC community by providing the tools that they demand, such as submittals and projects, automations, and sustainability search. And you can find that and other upcoming events on our website, concora.com slash events. And that concludes our presentation. So, Thank you very much again to our presenters. And of course, thank you to the audience for attending. We hope you walk away having gained something valuable and have a great rest of your day. Great, thank you.